When Martin Scorsese finally got around to returning to the mafia world he is so famous for, audiences everywhere were giddy with excitement at the prospect of seeing another gangster film like Goodfellas and Casino, as well as having an incredible story, being based off the best-selling crime novel I Heard You Paint Houses, the film sent expectations flying through the stratosphere when it cast Robert De Niro, Al Pacino and Joe Pesci, three titan mob movie actors, all in the same film for the first time. Now Scorsese is in no way past it. Despite being almost 80 years old, his last few films, including Silent, The Wolf of Wall Street, Hugo, Shutter Island and the Best Picture winning The Departed, have all been critically acclaimed and the movie's qualities speak for themselves. There was no doubt then that Scorsese would deliver at the very least a decent picture, in spite of his main cast all being senior citizen actors whose best days are behind them. There was a fair amount stacked against the film, including the risky and expensive de-aging CGI being used to make the actors younger for flashback scenes. But it has Scorsese, it has the cast, it has the story, it has the cash, it has an Oscar-winning screenwriter, an Oscar-winning editor and a veteran crew behind it. So fans could be rest assured it would of course at the very least be a good film. However, I don't think anyone was expecting the kind of reception the film is currently getting. Critics who have been lucky enough to see the film early before its wide release on Netflix on November the 27th have been absolutely raving about the film. So many different elements have been praised, from the story, the introspective nature of the film, the incredible acting and so much more. In fact, at the time of the making of this video, The Irishman is the best reviewed film of Scorsese's entire career. It is the only movie of his to maintain an elite 100% critical rating on Rotten Tomatoes after 80 reviews. Of course, the score could go down after a while, especially after November the 27th, which is when most will see the film. But it's a testament to Scorsese's incredible mastery of the filmmaking craft when, even after making stone-cold classics like Taxi Driver and Raging Bull decades ago, his best-reviewed film is his most recent. For comparison's sake, Scorsese's last film, Silence, is at 83%, The Wolf of Wall Street at 79%, Hugo is very popular at 93%, Shutter Island is at 68 and The Departed is sitting at 91%. Scorsese's highest rated narrative film before The Irishman was Taxi Driver, which has a score of 98%. The likes of Mean Streets and Goodfellas are at 97 and 96% respectively, and Raging Bull, considered by many critics to be Scorsese's towering magnum opus, is at 96%. I'd just like to point out though that Rotten Tomatoes wasn't around when those films came out. It gives you an idea of just how much critics love The Irishman, and it is also further evidence that Scorsese is still kicking it and doing the business. To have his best reviewed film this late in his career is astonishing, and it's made all the more satisfying when you consider just how much work went into getting The Irishman made. It'll be interesting to see if The Irishman is able to maintain its incredible rating when more critics see the picture. I've seen the film by the way, and I thought it was terrific. I'm still thinking about it, replaying scenes in my head days after seeing it. You can check out my non-spoiler review of the film on my channel where I go into further detail. But is it worthy of being the best reviewed Scorsese film? Is it the director's best film of his career? I don't think so, but that's just my opinion. It was a brilliant movie, don't get me wrong, but there's several Scorsese films I'd put ahead of it. Saying that though, it did take a while for my now favourite Scorsese films to grow on me, so I might be saying it is indeed his best film, after a few months, who knows. It's terrific news that the film is getting so much recognition, but I would like to end by giving a little advice, the same advice I'd give for any movie, which is not to go into the film with crazy expectations. Having impossibly high expectations will never help your enjoyment of a movie. You can ruin some brilliant films by having unfair expectations, and you can enjoy many terrible films by going in with low expectations. And also, don't expect a remake of Goodfellas, it's not at all the same kind of film, despite both being mob pictures. Let The Irishman stand on its own two feet, and judge it for what it is, and not what you wanted it to be and I'm sure you'll find that you'll experience one of the standout films of the decade.
Thanks for watching.